you're interested in choosing the right benchtop NMR spectrometer for your lab. I'm really excited to talk to you about that. You might be a chemistry professor who teaches NMR, a synthetic chemist who needs to determine or confirm a molecular structure, or maybe you use NMR in R&D. You're looking for the right benchtop NMR for your work and maybe need a little help so you won't have any regrets. You are in the right place. Hi, I'm Chris Tully, COO of Anasazi Instruments. We have been serving the NMR community for 25 years, and over the last 10 years, I have helped over 4,000 people like you choose an NMR spectrometer. You may have seen instruments from Brooker, Magritech, Nanalysis, Oxford, and Thermo Fisher. And Anasazi Instruments, where I work, We'll soon add a benchtop to our line of NMR spectrometers. So, how do you make the right choice? Well, right now I'm going to give you four questions that you can ask yourself. Then at the end of this video, I'll point you to a resource that you can use to make an educated decision. So don't miss that. Let's jump right in. Here are the four questions. One, what type of performance will I need for my application? Two, how strong of a magnet do I need? Three, what nuclei will I be studying? And four, what is my budget? All right, question number one. What performance will I need for my application? If you have a demanding application, you will need higher performance. Well, what is a demanding application, you ask? If you're analyzing unknowns, quantifying impurities, or looking at very dilute samples, then you will need higher performance. Okay, so what is high performance? Here's how I like to think about it. Let's take a look at a peak on an NMR spectrum. You want peaks that are sharp and narrow. We use terms like resolution and line shape when describing a peak's shape. The resolution of benchtop NMRs range from 2 tenths of a hertz to 1 and a half hertz, and that's the width of the peak halfway to the top. We call that half height or half max. The line shape for benchtop instruments ranges from 6 hertz to 80 hertz. This is how wide the peaks are near the baseline. So generally speaking, the narrower and sharper the peaks, the higher performing instrument you have. Okay, so now there is a third measure of performance that we should consider. This has to do with how tall the peak is in relation to how tall the baseline is. The height of the peak is our signal, the height of the baseline is our noise. If you have a challenging application, then you will prefer an instrument that produces the tallest peak with the least amount of noise. This is sensitivity, and we report it with signal to noise. If you have an application that demands sensitivity, the bigger the signal to noise ratio, the better. Now here's the thing, not all NMR companies use the same method or software to measure their sensitivity, so it's sometimes difficult to directly compare sensitivity specs. That's why I would always recommend this. If you have a challenging application, send a sample to the NMR manufacturer. Get the real results, and then you will know for sure if it will work for you or not. While that might not always be possible, I would highly recommend it. One last comment on sensitivity. The signal to noise ratio varies by nucleus. So if you are studying nuclei other than protons, you will need to know the sensitivity for your specific nuclei. This is rarely reported, so be careful and do your research. Question number two, how strong of a magnet do I need? Today's range in benchtop NMR magnets is one to 2.35 Tesla, or using frequency, as we more commonly do, 43 to 100 megahertz. How does magnetic field strength impact the results? Think of two peaks in a spectrum. You want those two peaks to be separated, sharp, and have your results as fast as possible, right? That is what magnetic field strength helps with. Imagine, you have an NMR spectrum for a molecule and some of the peaks are very close to each other, maybe even overlapping. If you double the strength of the magnet, you double the space between the peaks. So, increasing magnetic strength means you can analyze larger and larger molecules, more complex molecules with more and more peaks. Obviously, this is desirable. So, 
we just saw the installation of a 1.2 gigahertz or 25 Tesla magnet. Not a bench top, far from it. Bench tops, like I said, are one Tesla to 2.3 Tesla magnets. A stronger magnet gives you the best chance to resolve all of those peaks. But if you are comparing two benchtop NMRs with similar strength magnets, say 60 megahertz versus 80 megahertz, you will only see a very modest improvement in peak separation. Okay, now let's go a little deeper on how magnetic field strength affects sensitivity. As the frequency of your magnet increases, the sensitivity also increases. It increases substantially and you get a lot of bang for your buck. Let's, let's give an example. If all else is equal, same instrument design, same sample concentration, and you increase the magnet strength by 50%, you will have an instrument that is twice as sensitive. When you double the sensitivity, you can get your results four times faster. This is particularly critical in carbon NMR. Let's say that a carbon experiment takes four hours at 60 megahertz. That very same experiment with that same sample will take just one hour at 90 megahertz. So let's say you don't have the most powerful magnet. What can you do to compensate for lower sensitivity? Well, you can increase your runtime, four hours to 16 hours, or you can increase the sample concentration. However, there's still nothing you can do to compensate for the peak resolution as modest as those improvements may be. So to summarize, when you have a challenging application, here's what you look for. A combination of high resolution, great line shape, high sensitivity, and a strong magnetic field. Question number three, what nuclei will I be studying? If you're only interested in proton NMR, every benchtop NMR does proton. Actually, on top of that, they all do fluorine as well. Of course you want to do proton NMR, but what if you also wanted to do carbon? Then you will need a dual channel probe. The good news is you still have a lot of options. All of the benchtop manufacturers, except for Thermo Fisher, offer this capability. Now, some of you are also power users of your benchtop NMR. You not only want proton, fluorine, and carbon, but also other nuclei like phosphorus, lithium, boron, cobalt, and many more. In this case, you will need not just a dual channel probe, but a tunable dual channel probe. Only two manufacturers offer this option, Oxford with their X-Pulse and Anasazi Instruments Benchtop with our multi-nuclear option. For these two instruments, one channel handles proton and fluorine, the other is tunable to your nuclei of choice. Now, if money is of no concern, you can always buy multiple instruments. One dedicated to carbon, another to phosphorus, a third to lithium, just for example. Speaking of money, let's dive into question number four. What is my budget? Benchtop NMR spectrometers range in price from about $20,000 to $120,000. Price depends on magnet design, build strength, spectrometer performance, and probe capabilities. Our Anasazi 60 MHz Benchtop NMR will range from $40,000 to $55,000. So, there you go. Those are the four questions that I think you should ask yourself. I hope this video helps you choose an instrument that best meets your needs. NMR spectroscopy is an incredible technique that solves so many problems and has a wide range of applications. We want you to benefit from NMR and love it just as much as we do. If you'd like an even more in-depth resource on benchtop NMR performance, available experiments, software, magnet design, cost, and other features, please follow the link below to sign up for our comprehensive benchtop NMR buying guide. I've talked with thousands of scientists, professors, and students about what they are looking for in an NMR, and I would love to hear from you too. Just follow the link in the description below to let me know.